Welcome to my YouTube channel, A Primary of Seven. Today I am going to solve the third assignment of Advanced Concrete Technology. The first question is, as water cement ratio is decreased, the degree of saturation and the capillarity porosity is. So, if water cement ratio is decreased, what happens to the degree of saturation? Whether it will increase or decrease? and capillar porosity whether it will increase or decrease this is the question so for the question the answer is both decreases so why because water cement ratio helps for complete hydration and formation of C S H gel. Okay. Now, if this water cement ratio decreases, then degree of saturation or nothing but it is amount of hydration. Decreases. Okay. So Water cement ratio will help in hydration process and formation of CSH gel. That is, if we decrease the water cement ratio, so the amount of hydration that will happen in the cement obviously decreases. Clear? So, that is why it is decreases. And the capillar porosity is also decreases. Why? Because if water cement ratio decreases, the cement will have solid hexagonal shape and whenever the water cement ratio is decreased it will pack very densely so when it is going to pack very densely the air gaps between these particles will decrease that is air gaps are nothing but it is a porosity so capillarity porosity also decreases okay so that's why the answer for question number one is a d clear next question in a bse image of a concrete sample the phase that is seen as the brightest is so first of all what is bse it is bse means back scattered electron okay so this bse exhibits topography of of a specimen so, for example, if we take a particular specimen, the topography of that particular specimen is exhibited by BSE. Clear? So, in BSE, the brightest part or brightest particle is indicated like unhydrated cement grain. And Gray grain indicates CSH gel or white rim around aggregates. Indicates calcium hydroxide that is CH. Clear? So, these are there are three objective questions. The brightest part indicates unhydrated cement grain and calcium hydroxide is indicated by white rim around aggregate and this gray grain indicates CSH gel so but he has asked about the brightest part it is unhydrated cement grain so for question number two answer D Coming to question number 3, statement 1, he has given two statements, these are very simple statements, 
uh, it is a comparison between outer and inner CSH gel. So, first statement, the outer CSH formed is denser than inner CSH, clear? So, we will write the properties of inner CSH and outer CSH. So, inner CSH, outer CSH. So, inner CSH is denser and it is lighter. Inner CHS contains less amount of aluminium and silica. Here more amount of aluminium and silica. Next, it is formed with large grains. It is formed with small grains. Okay. But in this statement, the outer CSH formed denser. So, this is a wrong statement. And next, when cement is replaced by SCM, that is secondary cementaceous material. SCM means secondary cementaceous material. That is, when the cement particles are replaced by some of the secondary cementaceous material. So, the meaning of replacement of cement with the secondary cementaceous material is there are some alkalis in the cement, something like sodium and potassium alkalis. These alkalis were replaced by certain secondary cementaceous material. So, whenever these alkalis are removed, then there is a decrease in concentration of pore solution. So, there is Decrease in concentration of pore solution. But he has given the concentration of pore solution increases. So, this statement is also wrong. So, both the statements are false. Answer D for question number 3. Clear? I have not written anything regarding secondary second statement. That is when cement is replaced with some secondary cementaceous material. In cement there are some alkalis. Sodium and potassium alkalis. So, when cement is replaced, that is alkalis were replaced. So, the concentration will decrease. Clear? Answer D for question number 3. And now, question number 4. The hydration kinetics of cement is independent of rate of dissolution of phases at the initial stage. So, whether the statement is true or false, he asked. So, the hydration kinetics of cement depends on rate of resolution. Rate of dissolution. So, both in the initial stages, both in initial stage and in latter stage. Clear? It is not only depend upon the initial stage, it will also depend on the latter stage. But he has given it is independent. The statement is false. Here, fourth statement is false. Next question. Fifth. The density of filling of paste is lesser near the aggregate due to gas effect. So, the effect it may be a wall effect or loosening effect. So, I will explain. It is ob obviously the answer is wall effect. Wall effect means near the aggregate. more amount of calcium hydroxide is formed. Okay. So, the density is very less. Around aggregate. Okay. This is why because Around this, there is some aggregate and around this aggregate, the first layer is calcium hydroxide layer. So, this will have low density. This effect is called wall effect. Clear? Next question. The above phenomenon mentioned in the question number 5, that is the wall effect phenomenon, facilitates the growth of more 
dash around the aggregates. Obviously, for question number 6, CH, I already mentioned around an aggregate, the largest layer formed around aggregate is calcium hydroxide. This calcium hydroxide is CH gel. Okay. Answer for question number 6 is CH. Clear? Coming to question number 7. Major ions present in pore solution of mature hydrated cement paste. Obviously, I already mentioned there are some alkalis in the cement. Sodium, potassium, alkalis. Along with these alkalis, hydroxide, calcium hydroxide ion. So, OH- ion is also present. Sodium, potassium and hydroxide. These three ions were present. So, generally sodium ion is 0.6 percentage and some potassium ion is also somewhat around 0.4 to 0.5 percentage and hydroxide. These three ions will be present in question number 7 that is in the hydrated cement paste. So, here I have selected three answers. He has given this is the indication. If he has given the marking like this, these questions are of multiple answers. Okay. They will not have a single answer. They will, these type of questions will have two or three answers. We can select all these three at a time. If we will select only sodium, we will get one third mark because the answers were three here. So, if we will select sodium and potassium, we will get two third mark. So, we will get partial answers, partial marks, not complete marks. Okay, whenever we select the complete answers, we can able to get the complete um, complete marks for the given question. Clear? Coming to 8th question. According to powers, the amount of capillary pores available in the system is dash times the amount of gel pores. First of all, what is the difference between capillary pores and gel pores? So, he has given gel pores are less than 10 nanometer and the capillar pores are greater than 10 nanometers. Generally in a hydrated cement paste, the amount of capillary pores are two thirds of total pores and gel pores are one third of total pores. Clear? But he has given this as the amount of capillary pores available in the system is how many times the gel pores. So, it is two times. Clear? For example, if we, they are out of 100, 33 were gel pores and 67 will be capillary pores. Clear? So, the answer is 2 for question number 8. And next question. So, obviously the next question is also, he has given something like square boxes. So, it is multiple answer questions. So, gel water indicates, obviously the gel water is a term indicates adsorbed water and inner layer water. Adsorbed water is the water attached over the, over the surface of cement particle. And inner layer water is water held between Layers of CSH gel. Okay, these two were indicated as the gel water. And now, bound water means chemically bound to the hydration product. Clear? Next question. Theoretically, to completely hydrate 100 grams of cement, the amount of bound water required is generally 0.23 grams, 0.23 grams of cement, 0.23 grams of bound water required for complete hydration of 1 gram of cement. For 100 grams of cement, how much water? No, you just multiply cross multiple. 100 into 0.23 divided by 1. That is 23 grams of bound water. 
so 23 grams of bound water is required for complete hydration of 100 grams of cement clear so the answer is 23 for question number 10 next which of these compounds are responsible for ph of the core solution so i obviously i already mentioned there are some alkalis like Na2O and K2O. These alkalis present in the cement. So whenever we get added to water, these alkalis will dis dissolve and responsible for pH increment. So around 12 to 13 in the pore solution. Okay, so the answer is sodium and potassium. So this is also multiple answer question. So last question, the calcium hydroxide crystal which are represent in pore spaces of hydrated cement paste are in which shape? Obviously, the shape is, I already discussed it, the shape of this calcium hydroxide is hexagonal shape. Okay, so the answer for question number, last question is hexagonal shape. So, this is a complete theory part. Uh, you can remember all the important questions. Thank you.